Hello everyone. Um, today I would like to show you some tips and tricks when treating um, scan data, uh, 3D scan data. And we'll start by bringing up the model called scanmeshdirect.wire. Open that one. So what we see here is a representation of a 3D scan of an object. Uh, and um, to see what we're working with here, we can shade it. It's a mesh. And if we take a closer look, you can see it consists of triangles only. But the surface quality is rather poor. In order to see the shaded uh, image a little better, uh, we can bring on some transparency in the control panel uh, for the mesh to see the shaded model. And if we use this one, you can see that the quality of the surfaces is rather poor. So we need to do something about this. And this is the reason why we want to model high quality surfaces based on the 3D scan data. Now, this is a symmetrical, uh, detail. So the first thing we want to do is to cut the mesh along the symmetry plane uh, in order to, to make sure we're working symmetrically over the symmetry plane or the XZ plane. Um, and the first thing I want to do is to create a plane uh, right here. And oh, we want to uh, rotate, rotate that slightly, uh, 0, 90, 90, uh, and also scale it. Oops. Scale it, um, something like that. And go back to the perspective view. And we now have a surface uh, at the symmetry plane. Now, meshes can be cut, and all the mesh operations are found under this tab right here called Mesh. And if we go to Mesh Curves, we can intersect the mesh go with the surface, like so. We've now created a kind of a curve on surface, but this is rather a curve on mesh that can be used to, to, to trim the mesh. And that can be done under mesh partitioning, uh, mesh cut. So I pick the, the mesh and I pick the curve and I go spacebar for cut right here. And I pick the side I want to keep. And we have now cut the mesh along the symmetry plane. We can get rid of that surface now. Uh, we don't need that anymore. Oh, uh, looky here, alias just crashed. Wonderful. See if we can reopen that. But yeah, here we go. Uh, so let's pick this uh, mesh again and get rid of the construction history like so. And uh, now we hopefully can get rid of the surface and also the curves right here. So now we have half the mesh but we want to uh, work with the entire unit. I'll explain that to you in a few minutes. So what I'm gonna do is to pick, pick the mesh and mirror it uh, with duplicate mirror across the XZ plane like that. We now have two uh, perfectly uh, symmetrical uh, scan meshes. If I go pick object, you can see that I have two different uh, objects here. 
uh, I want to bring those together to one. So I go mesh, uh, mesh partitioning and mesh merge. Pick one and pick the second one and go spacebar. And now we have uh, one object here, which is now symmetrical. Uh, let's bring some transparency back to this mesh to see what we're doing here. Also, we can shade it up and have a look. And now it's, um, you can almost see that it is a mirrored image. Uh, if we bring on the diagnostic shader showing the curvature of the mesh, you get a pretty good idea of the curvature of the surfaces. And um, best thing of all is that you can see exactly, or not exactly, but fairly close, where the different radii radi uh, starts. So we want to work with this, and let's bring some transparency to this shaded image as well, and go to the top view, like that. What we want to do now is to focus on the top surface right here. We want to create a surface directly onto the mesh um, without uh, creating any curves uh, before that. So what we do is we go to surfaces, boundary surfaces and square, we go to explicit, we keep all the, the boundaries free because we don't have any curves, right? Uh, we go to explicit control and set the degrees to two by two. And by holding down control and alt, I can now click out the corners of this square surface like so. And we have something to begin with here. If we go back to the perspective view, we can see that this is a, a perfectly flat surface. It's not exactly symmetrical because I just approximated the corners here. So we need to make that symmetrical over the, the XZ plane. And we can do that by uh, picking the surface and go to object edit and symmetric modeling. And what this does is that it adjusts the surface so that it will become perfectly symmetrical over the XZ plane, like so. Also, uh, from here on, if I pick a CV and manipulate it somehow, the other side will follow. So this ensures that my manipulations of this surface uh, stays symmetrical, which is important here. Okay, um, we need to see, uh, in order to, to manipulate the surface, we need to work first of all with the edges. And I want the edges of this surface to be fairly close to the, the border right here also follow this contour here and here. So what I want to do first of all is to pick this hole right here and I go to the CV manipulating tool here, press space bar uh, to show me the controls and I want to slide this hole right here slightly backwards, something like that. Uh, and the reason for that is that I can see that the shape here is rather flat here, and then it accelerates along this contour here. Same goes for this contour here. So if I then go uh, to pick a single CV, whoops, Uh, a single CV, like so, I can slide it out and try to follow the shape of where the radius here begins. 
and you notice now that it doesn't matter which side I, I choose to manipulate these CDs, the other side will follow automatically. If we go to this one right here, we want to slide it out and try to <clears throat> follow the shape right here. Also for this one, we bring it up to follow the shape of this contour right here. Okay, if we go back to the perspective view now, we can see that we have something to work with. Uh, we know now that the corners are sitting on the scan data, but that's about it. We now need to bring this surface up to the scan data. So we're going to use a different tool. Let's turn the diagnostic shader off and use the cross-section tools. So I pick the surface and the scan, and I want to bring out the Y cross-sections onto both the surface and the scan. These are um, way too few, so I can double click and set the distance between the cross sections. So if we go 10, I think we'll be fairly okay. So now we have something to, to work with. So I want to bring these green cross sections up to the brown ones. And I want to do it in a systematic way. Uh, so I'll work with the hulls to begin with before working on single CDs. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, pick this hull right here and I want to work normally to the surface. So I bring it up normally. And this is a good time to turn on the orthographic viewing. Um, we want the perspective to be parallel. And I want to bring this up slightly more. I'm looking in this area right here. So I want the cross sections to match there. And that's looking fairly okay. And uh, now I can work with the single CDs, which are found here. So I want to bring, um, let's, let's go here. I want to bring this one down slightly. I'm looking right here now, uh, trying to match the scan data or match my surface to the scan data. Uh, let's have a look at the end here. Uh, we can see something is happening here. We'll de deal with that a little later. Um, let's try to bring this one down slightly uh, here. And this one obviously needs to come up here. Bring that one down slightly. It's looking pretty good. Uh, roughly uh, what we want here. This one probably needs to come down a bit, uh, which affects again this one. I'll bring that one back up. Um, so this is roughly the shape we want. We still have some problems, obviously. So we're going to use uh, a different analyzing tool here. So let's pick nothing and clear the cross section so we can see what we're doing here. Um, if we go to evaluate deviation map, we can set the acceptable distance between a surface and the scan data. So I pick the surface, I click accept and the scan data. I then get a, a color mapping of the distance between my surface and uh, the scan data. I can now work with my surface and see how this deviation map updates 
in real time. So if I bring this up or down, we need to adjust the mouse sensitivity, sensitivity here. Uh, and we can see uh, that the degree of this surface will not be enough to, to adapt it to the scan. So this is a good time to bring up the degree. Uh, let's bring it to a third degree to begin with. Give us the CVs that we need and continue trying to manipulating the surface. So we bring this one up and probably this one back down and up with that. And this tells me I probably need to bring this single CV here down. So I want the surface to turn green. Uh, let's continue working with that hole. It's coming on pretty good there. Uh, bring that one down. Then go to the single CV right here. Bring that one up and this one back down. And we are close now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's just look at the area right here. What is happening here? Uh, I take this CV right here, bring it down slightly. Uh, that gives us a blue little island here. Bring that one up. This one down, this one down again, this one up, and maybe even that one, yeah. This one back down. And notice now that I'm working rather systematically and trying to keep the degree of the surface as low as possible. And when I can't reach it any longer, that's the point where I, I start increasing the, the degree of the surface. But we now have a surface which is within 0 0.2 millimeters from the scan data. And we did that uh, without having to create a single curve. Let's have a look. What does this surface actually look like? So we select the surface and we bring on the curvature plot, uh, curvature, bring up the cone scale. And we can see here that we have a pretty consistent curvature across the surface. It's uh, close to circular. Um, this looks a bit peculiar, but that's because we have this shape right here going back and also here. So this looks pretty good. Let's look alongside of the surface as well and bring down the scale so we see what we have here. So we have a surface that is consistently accelerating along the surface, which is exactly what we want, because if we look at the shape of this, this thing, we can see, as I told you in the beginning, it's rather flat here, and the curvature then accelerates in a consistent way, which is exactly what we have created. Uh, I'll be back in part two, and we will start working on the front surface right here. So thank you for now.